Okay, let me get a mic check real quick. Mic check, sorry I'm late. Sorry I am late. Do not cuss me out. The first thing I want to do, though, is I want to thank Brian McGraw for the nine to the ninth power of nine donation. I want to thank you, brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate the love. All right. First off, first and foremost, give me a mic check. Give me a mic check. Okay, y'all hear me okay? All right, all right, all right. Everything okay? I had a... Peace, peace, peace. I was having some issues, technical difficulties. But I'm good now. I got... Peace, peace. Okay, everything is perfect. Sounds good. All right, great. All right, so y'all know that this is day four of creditors and their bonds. So on the screen right now, what you see is the back office of SPC University. I'm going to the download section right here in Redemption Books. We have creditors and their bonds, and we're going to go right to where we left off. I do that. I already did that. I already know I did that. Yeah, right here. Show your good faith. All right. All right. Y'all ready to roll? First of all, hit the like button. How many people we got in here today? Like 91 people here? I guess everybody will start piling in when they see that I am broadcasting. Yeah, I gave y'all an early, early, I, I mean, I set the thing on this early today so everybody would get a notification, so. All right, so. We're going to leave off. What was my method of learning? Uh, on I was in jail. And I didn't have any legal cards. I used uh, notebook paper and, and you know uh, wet the paper and made made them in the cards and put the uh, the defin uh, the word on the front, the definition on the back. I wrote them by hand, and I probably had about I don't know two, three, four hundred words. And I just get up every morning, I go through the whole stack, just read them. I didn't have anything else to do, so, you know, it was easy to do. It might sound like a lot to you, but trust me, it's nothing when you need to occupy your mind. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's get, to, let's, let's, let's get to the video. All right, we're going to talk about good faith and intent. All right, we're going to talk about good faith and clean hands as well. I want you to understand that these are equitable remedies. These are not statutory remedies. So you're not going to see any reference to statutory codes. All right. The reason you are conducting an administrative process is to secure an agreement of the parties, which constitutes a contract. And that is what you do in equity. You adjudicate contracts or agreements. So we need agreements. Uh, the definition of equity is fairness, impartiality, and even-handed dealing. Equity goes to the substance. Legal goes to the form. That's why they deal with procedures and things of that nature. But when equity, we're going to deal with the substance of what is going on. And the substance of what is going on is, number one, there isn't any money. These people, if you are an attorney and you're looking right now, you could try to act like you don't understand this. And if you went to law school and you just steal that damn clueless and stupid, I don't know what to say to you. Federal Reserve notes are not money. There isn't any money in this system. I don't care how y'all try to frame it or try to make it look. It's no goddamn money. Everything that is operating in this system is a debt-based system. I don't understand how why that's so hard to understand. Thank you, Brian McGross. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. 
Did everybody else, y'all can hear me okay, right? Do I sound far away to everybody else? Look on my on my phone and listen to myself, because a lot of times it don't be me. It's just y'all just got some raggedy ass fucking computer equipment. Oh yeah, you'll have attorneys that admit it. They admit it. They ain't never gonna. They ain't never gonna admit it on record. But if you get cool enough with a couple of attorneys, they'll admit it. That's why I roll the way that I do. Man, I don't be not be caring what these attorneys say. Man, I be looking at them on the internet. They be really just thinking that because they got a law degree in some kind of way that puts them in a superior position. That will never put you in a superior position. Anytime you work in the public, you are a public servant. All right? You are subservient to the masters who are the sovereigns of the people. The sovereign's just asleep right now. I'm trying to wake them up. But you ain't never in a superior position when you work in the public. You know, I had some guys today, what if they take away this? How are you worried about a, a public servant taking away something from you? They, they need to be worried about getting put in front of a firing squad. That should be the foremost thing in front of their mind. But right now, all the American people are too weak to do that. They're too soft. These motherfuckers in America don't even know if they males or females right now. We the laughing stalk of planet Earth. They over here trying to, they mad at Uganda. They ain't not talking about America is going to put punishment. What Americans is worried about the LGBTQ community and what Uganda is doing? Your government is way out of line, man. Yeah, they've been hijacked. And if you can't see that, you just stupid. Stupid. Just stupid. Sitting there letting your government tell the world, oh, you know, we need to do something against these people because, you know, they just passed the most harshest law on planet Earth um, against uh, homosexuality. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have to take some sort of economic. Man, who the fuck, who the fuck are they representing? That, this is a representative form of government. Who the fuck are they representing up there on Capitol Hill? Because it sure ain't goddamn me. It ain't me. They represent you because you godless if you are. These people are godless. Man, let me tell you why these people are godless. Hold on, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you all this, man. And, and, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to pull it up and watch how on Google they didn't change everything. Talking about it's mistranslated in the Bible. These motherfuckers is off the chain. These Zionists, these Zionists, does the Bible approve of home? Look at all this stuff they didn't change. Look at all this stuff they didn't change, man. Look at all this stuff. Look at all this stuff. They're trying to keep you away from the verses in the Bible. And then they try to say, right here, all right, if a man, if, all right, right here, if there is a man who lies with a male as those who lie with a woman, both of them have committed a detestable act, they should surely be put to death. Their blood guiltiness is upon them. This is Leviticus 20, 23. So basically, the United States of America, the laws come from the Bible. So when you see your representatives up there on Capitol Hill doing what they're doing, they're telling you that they heathens and they godless. The God ain't playing no part in what they are doing up there when they are trying to promote this right here, that these detestable acts that the God that they claim they believe in, or they claim that they believe in, but, you know, I don't know. Is telling them this. They're trying to keep this away from all of y'all. Man, you need to get the hell out of here. You need to get the hell out of here with this. All these different translations telling you this. Leviticus, and they said, well, we ain't under the law. Okay, this is for all of y'all who say we ain't, ain't under the law no more. Because we got a lot of ignorant Christians who don't even read the Bible at all. Just say just ignorant stuff too. They just ignorant. I got no damn. 
I ain't got no. I ain't got no. I don't got no patience uh, uh, for you, for you ignorant Christians and everything. I, I just don't. I ain't got no Christian right, right here. This Jesus, this Jesus Christ talking. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men to do so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. All you preachers out there teaching that we ain't under the law, you a fucking demon. You, you are te teaching people wrongly that we ain't under the law no more. We under the grace of Jesus Christ. You lying to people and you sending people to hell. If you want to challenge me any day, I don't give a damn. If you got 20,000, I got more congregation than you because I got way more followers than you. you got, I don't care if you read Queflo Dollar, whoever you got, 20,000 followers. If you want to put come on and do a debate with me, we can do it because I've been sitting down here to go to war with you motherfuckers. That's why I'm, that's, I'm a battle angel. I'm in here to cut up lies. And you're sitting here lying to these people and contributing to the destruction of this planet. You's a punk. You done let these damn people punk you out. You sitting out here motherfucking propagating this ridiculousness. Let me get back to this right here, man. I got to tell you, I was in a bad, I was in a good mood today, but now let me go back. All right, we're going to get back on track now. I just made me mad when I seen that on the United States. They talking about, you know, putting sanctions against Uganda because these people do not tolerate homosexuality. But you can see in the United States of America, the United States of America turning the land of punks. And I can't blame nothing but the men in this country that's allowing it to sit down and happen. If you apathetic, if you just sat sitting by Adley, apathetic and letting it happen, you's a punk too. Every time, one thing I like about what my man Charleston White, Charleston White, y'all need to check out what he what he said to them uh, to them gay girls who was talking to him when he's talking about his views on homosexuality. He said, "I ain't got no problem with homosexuality. What I got a problem with is you trying to force it on me. You don't force your beliefs on me. You can do whatever you want to do, but leave me, leave my children, and leave me out of it. And no way am I, and no way I'm being vocal about it. Do I subscribe to your lifestyle?" You may get mad about it. You might not subscribe to mine. But that's the thing about it. You need to respect if this is a free country. You need to respect my view on it because I chose to have a religious view and follow God. You may not. If you're talking about you homosexual and then you find that you're a preacher, y'all letting homosexuals become preachers. Man, y'all is y'all are ridiculous, man. <laughs> y'all ridiculous. Apostle Paul is the Apostle Paul was never an apostle first of all he ain't well, from the original 12 and I can chop up all that about Paul Paul changed his name from Saul which means little one he claims he had a immaculate uh, some type of meeting with Jesus on the roadside which contradicts itself in Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 22 all right. he's the one who went to the Gentiles when Jesus said very clearly very clearly very clearly. Let me hold on, y'all, because somebody just said some Matthew 10. What does it say right here? I, and I got an answer for everything y'all say. 10 5. These 12, here are the disciples right here. Here are the disciples. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are the first is Simon, called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebeus, whose surname is Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Ain't nowhere no Paul in none of them twelve. Here's what Jesus told him to do. 
He said, these 12, Jesus sets forth and commanded them saying, go not in the way of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans, any ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Jesus said, I don't know how many times I come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and y'all shutting up in these congregations talking about it wasn't time but for Jesus. You just lying to the people and y'all didn't add these epistles of this man named Saul, changed his name from a Hebrew name to a Greek name. Ain't none of the Jews doing that today. Ain't none of them changed their name. You look at them, Peter, uh, Ben, Paul, Paul, uh, Peter, Ben, John. Anytime you look at somebody in Hollywood and they Jewish, just look at their first name. They pull their name out the Bible. Okay, there ain't none of them doing that. But this man right here changed his name from Saul, which means asked, to Paul, which means little one. You ever see that movie, uh, Paul, about the extraterrestrial? Y'all see this movie right here? This movie right here is called Paul. Y'all see this movie right here called Paul? Why is that movie called Paul? You ever wonder why that movie was called Paul? That movie is called Paul because Paul means little one. He was a little extraterrestrial. I have, and just like, you know, when uh, Denzel Washington, he made the movie, uh, 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 what's the movie? He's walking with the Bible. It's called the, uh, uh, the, book, of, uh, the book of Eli. And Eli means God. You know, so you got to know some languages and things. These people, these people in Hollywood, they Jews. They know what's going on. They playing that. They playing this. What? Which they own all of Hollywood, and they know they speaking to people who are not educated in anything. So you know, you just watching shit for entertainment, and all the time they giving you information and trying to educate you on some shit. And you sitting your sorry ass up there thinking it's some entertainment, and they absolving themselves of any liability because they under they said, well, look, it's on you if you want to look at this for entertainment. We didn't told you what we about to do. You ain't caught on yet that everything we put in the movie at some type point in the future it start happening. Jesus ain't saying nothing, and he teaching y'all, you Jehovah's Witnesses out there, they, they, they y'all being taught up there. Y'all got all these people up there telling y'all y'all Gentiles. It's just ridiculous. I ain't teaching my people that bullshit. I'm not teaching my people that bullshit that you is that you is not of the chosen, and you need a little grace. You need to be graced because you fall short in some kind of way. I right, man, if y'all don't get, see, I understand this doctrine that they are teaching. I've been doing this for thirty years. I mean, I ain't new to this. I've been doing this for 30 years. And I can tell you right now that they are lying to all of you about a lot of different things. They go to these seminary schools and they be instructed what to come out and tell y'all to keep y'all in check. They done invaded every aspect of society. Anyway. Now we got that out. I just wanted to get that out the way because we need our men to find their nuts. They nuts, you know, it's like y'all scared to say it. They got social media is doing it though. You know, on social media, they like you say anything. They, you know, them, Jew, them Jews who own all these social media platforms, they try to cut your nuts off. If you say anything, if you talk like I'm talking right now, I'm surprised anybody reported me right now. He's over there uh, talking hate speech. I'm sitting here quoting scriptures out the Bible. representing morality. So let's get to it. All right, so what I was talking about, we was talking about equity. Your remedy is an equity. Why is it an equity? All right, let's look at it this way. What is equity? God judges... Where is it at? He will judge Psalms 96. He will judge the people with equity. These judges who are sitting in these robes. This is what they used to do right here. The judges used to come in there and had a holy bible in their hand they don't do it no more i had a judge do that on me a federal judge he came into uh into court he had a bible in his hand and when he said all rise i didn't stand up i sat down and he looked terrified of me 
because I was looking right at him. Because when I looked at him, I was looked at him, he saw in my eyes that I knew the truth and that he was a despicable human being, that he has betrayed his people. He's despicable. They walk in here and they start taking the Bible. They took the Bible out, out, out the courtroom. Now they ain't bringing it in the courtroom. And y'all ain't said nothing about it. Because they said these ain't nothing but the heathens anyway. They ain't following none of this shit anyway. And you have the audacity, the unmitigated gall, to think that you are entitled to some sort of remedy. I, when you are, what do you follow? I'm going to ask the people, why don't you put in the chat room right now, what is your belief? What's your belief? What's your morality? Where do you derive your morality from? If you don't believe in the, in, in the Bible, because like, it seems like it's in vogue right now to tear down all the religions. I don't believe in that Bible stuff because you've been taught that. You've been taught these Zionists, you follow social media and TV, you've been programmed to think that way. So if you're not following that, what, what is, what is uh, your consciousness? Is that what you're going to say? My own mind? So you think you can do whatever you want to do? And you don't know the laws of the universe or anything like that? You think you can just do whatever you want to do? Is that what you think? Put it in the chat room if that's what you think. We got to talk about stuff like this. Because, see, y'all supposed to be sovereigns. And if a sovereign can't govern himself from the inside, he has to be governed from outside. So what we need to understand and what we need to do is what is governing your conduct? If it's not the Bible, if it's not the Quran, if it's not the Torah, if it's not any of the mainstream religions or any religion for that fact, if it's not natural laws or anything like that, what the fuck is, what if, what the fuck is guiding you? What are the lamps that guide your feet? This is, where, this is where it came from, man. They used to swear on the Bible. They stopped doing that because in the Bible it told you don't swear on the Bible. But this is where it used to come from. This is why laws used to came, were derived from was from this Bible. So God judges, the, 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 the reason I'm bringing that forth is the judges, the reason they have on those black robes, they're supposed to be priests. Okay? All right, they're supposed to be priests. Because you can't, God, you can't judge people if you don't know God's law. What qualifies you to be a judge if there's no higher power guiding your consciousness? Who the fuck? If, so what? They just doing what they want to do. They sitting, if, if they're a public servant sitting on the bench and in the legislature of public servants they're supposed to be representatives of the people passing statutory laws okay what is their morality what is guiding their consciousness especially if they're talking about allowing lgbtq allowing men to marry men we you can identify what the hell you want to be we got men running track with women blowing them out i don't care about that I, I, all you transgenders out there if you want to tear them women asses up it's Sports, go ahead and do it because then maybe they ask or realize and stop walking around talking about women can do whatever a man can do. Go over there and kick them right in their goddamn ass or put that shit on repeat until they walk, until they wake the fuck up. Matter of fact, when you do it, take their ass to war and let us sit our ass at home. <laughs> put the gun in their hand, let, the, let all the countries, y'all send all y'all women to war and let us stay at home and take care of the kids. Fuck it, I don't mind. <laughs> Let them do it. <laughs> Let them do it. All right, let's get back. I had to go in my diatribe a little bit. That was my little rant. Okay, I'm going to come off my rant. Okay, today this is part four of creditors and their bonds. All right. Now, we started talking about equity. When you see the word good faith, that's an that's a principle of equity, clean hands and good faith. I want y'all to write those words down. As a matter of fact, let's take the time to look up those words. You gotta look those words up. Let's look them up.
All right, so we go. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look up equity. We're gonna write these words down now, cause you got this is this. You gotta know what these words mean. So we're gonna look up the word equity. All right, so right here. Equity, fairness, impartiality, even-handed dealing. The company's policies require managers to use equity in dealing with subordinate employees. Two, the body of principles. It's a body of principles constituting what is fair and right. Natural law. The concept of inalienable rights reflects the influence of equity on the Declaration of Independence. Like I just showed you, God judges in equity. It is, in its popular sense, it equity is practically equivalent to natural justice. But it would be a mistake to suppose that equity, as administered by the courts, embraces a jurisdiction as wide and extensive as that, which would result from carrying into operation all the principles of natural justice. There are many matters of natural justice wholly unprovided for, from the difficulty of framing any general rules to meet them, and from the doubtful wisdom of a policy of attempting to give a legal sanction to duties of imperfect obligation, such as charity, gratitude, and kindness. A large proportion of natural justice in its widest sense is thus not judicially enforced, but is left to the conscience of each individual. That is some bullshit. That right there is a good example of a demon trying to motherfucker doing some wordsmith shit. This is some bullshit. And you know what I'm saying? All of this shit right here, you can throw it in the fucking trash. Let me tell you what it is, man. You know, your rights enforce through contracts. As a private individual, everything that God deals with is dealing with it in a contract. Your first contract is with God. It's, you know, you have, you, you have a covenant with the creator of the boundless universe. He makes a, a covenant with you. Then you make a covenant with your wife, a contract. Okay, private individuals deal with contracts, and then when you express your intent in the form of a contract, that's what constitutes a natural right, as long as it doesn't violate anybody else's right, it constitutes a natural right, and now you have something that can be enforced. This is why, in this movement, it requires everyone to put things down on paper and give and inform the government of what your intentions are and how you intend to live your life, because right now, they're going off of a presumption because you ain't said shit to them. They say, hey, we're going to keep throwing these benefits and privileges at you, and if you keep taking them, shit, you're using that social security number, you right there, you showing you got more dependency on us than you have on God. You already showing it right there. You got more dependency on man. You put all your, your, your faith in man. Let's look at that real quick. Let's look at Matthew. What is it? Why worry? I think it's in Matthew 24. What is this? Oh, yeah, right here. Yeah, this right here. Matthew 6. Yeah, I like this right here. It's Matthew 6. Let me tell me. Somebody always try Matthew 6. Where is that? Damn. I like this right here. I want y'all to pay this. This is talking about your third eye. The lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is sound or open, your whole body will be filled with light. The lamp of the body is the eye. It doesn't say eyes. It says eye. The lamp of the body is the eye. So here it is. Dependency on what? God. Dependency on, let me blow this up for y'all, because y'all right here, these, I'm, I'm, this for all the heathens that are watching right now. Because who think, see, I read the Bible because I understand, I don't read the Bible because I think the Bible is so accurate and everything. I haven't studied all religions. All of them talk about the same thing. This is something you can understand, okay? All of them, even when you go into ancient Egypt, they all follow, they use different words different terms to express the same thing, but they all, they won't say God. They may say Allah. They may say Yahuwah Elaham. 
They may say the all. They may say source. They may say, you know, they may use some sort of different type of term, but you're going to start to see that they're all talking about the same thing because there's only one. There's only one. Okay, so right here it says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. There's not life more than the food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing in the barns that your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more important than they? And that's another thing about the law of attraction. You can't be, you got to be in the now. You can't worry about tomorrow. You worry, you, when you think about, when you live in tomorrow, you live in worry. When you live in the past, you live in regret. You have to be, your mind has to be firmly established in the present, in the eternal now. When you give in to worry, you solidify worry in your life. Worry is the greatest, greatest expense of mental energy that there is because 90% of the shit you worry about never happens. Why are you wasting time out of your life and every second you're getting closer to death worrying about some shit when you need to be turning your attention to the higher power and rooting yourself in something that is sound, something that is dependable, which constitutes an understanding of the laws of the creator of the boundless universe, which are immutable laws. Can any of you, look, look at what he say, look at what he say. Can any of you, by worrying at a single moment, moment to your lifespan, why are you anxious about your clothes? Learn from the way the wildflowers grow. They do not work or spin. But I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field which grows today and is thrown into, uh, into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry and say, what are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans, i.e. Gentiles, see, you say Gentiles. All these things the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly father knows that you need them all. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. And where is this kingdom of heaven? Luke, Luke, what is it, Luke? Luke. I forgot, it's Luke 7, I think it's Luke 7, 21, is it? I think it's Luke 7. I forgot, kingdom of heaven in you. Well, it's right here, Luke 17, 21. Okay, I got it right here. All these people understood this too. All these people is really interested. It says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, this is the things these preachers don't teach you. They talk about hold your hands up to the sky and to outer space. All right? They telling you to look everywhere and that's what they do. That's what they've been appointed to do. They've been appointed to keep you confused. They want you to look any and everywhere. They don't care what religion you have, you can be a Jehovah's Witness. You can be a Muslim. You can be a, you can be a Jew. You can be a Christian. You can be a Seven Day Adventist. You can be whatever that. You can be a Satanist. Right? You can be whatever the hell you want to be. All these people are worried about is one thing that you never, ever, ever, ever start looking inside to find answers. Keep their ass distracted with anything insignificant as long as it is out. Put, put God in a cloud. But y'all y'all didn't anthropomorphize God and made and put him inside his own creation. Where was God at? How long did God exist before he decided to create everything? How long did he exist? And then where was he at? When he was he just floating in outer space? 
He's just floating in outer space in a void for like eternity, and then one day he just had the bright idea, let there be light. I mean, is, is, this, is, is this your reasoning? And you know I'm telling the truth because you, you, it's just ridiculous. You just, y'all sound like primitives. That's why I got to look at Egypt and everything because when I look at some of these preachers and everything, they sound like primitives. Some of the way that they explain things as if it is intelligent. This is not intelligent. This is the mark of a child. Y'all listening to children. No, we can't focus on creditors and the bonds. You're gone and go. Because everything, I just talked about equity. I'm sitting here telling you, this is your fucking problem. Right there, you see that guy right there, Ruben Fernandez? That's your problem. That's why ain't nothing working for you. Everything that we're talking about is based off what I'm talking about right now. If you saw the fir very first thing, the very first thing you started talking about, spiritual concepts. I'm trying to give y'all some type of spiritual concept right now. Ain't none of this working for you, just totally physical. When you're totally physical, the physical is the domain of effects. There's no power in effect. The power is in the cause. Causation. The causal, the causal principle is spiritual. It's mental. It's not physical. You got to get your mind right first. I can teach you. can read all day about paperwork. That's what the fuck is wrong with y'all. Y'all going in the courtroom creating these mounds and mounds of fucking fucked up uh, uh, case law and everything because you fucking heathens. And I don't give a fuck if you don't like it or not. I'm sitting here talking to you about that because y'all sitting on y'all ass allowing the United States of America to go to shit and just watching it on fucking TV. Man, you coming? You coming at one of? Man, don't don't do that to me. You just sit back and wait for me to get through. I'm 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 furious because I see other men have turned into punks in the United States of America. You are getting punked out. And they saying you punks. And I'm, I, I'm not going to be called no punk living in the United States of America. These people are looking at you and are seeing what you're allowing your government to do. You think, let me ask you a question. You think you're going to get some sort of remedy from creditors and their bonds if you're totally physical and you're sitting back apathetic and you're letting your government do what they're doing right now? They're going to laugh at you in your face. You think that you think you think you think that they can sit here and tell you that somebody can identify something and you go along with it, but you're gonna sit here and read creditors and their bonds and you're gonna get some sort of remedy. That, that that's what you think. You believe that? Equitable principles. Let's look at them real quick. See if we can find some equitable principles, maxims of equity. Let's look at some of them. This you should write down. And I'm giving you everything. See, when I was in jail and I studied all this stuff, you got to understand, I studied the Bible, the Quran. I studied the law of attraction. I'm going to give you everything that I read. I read the Bible every day. I read the Master Key by Charles Han L. every day, 24 chapters. I read uh, Science of Getting Rich every day. I read the Kabbalion every day. I read um, every, all the, I, I pulled out because uh, the, the uh, uh, Psalms are spells. I read the Proverbs. I didn't read anything with wisdom in it. Anything with wisdom. The Sirach of Jesus, anything that had wisdom or contained wisdom. The Tao anything that contained wisdom. Hell, even Bruce Lee's Zen, Zen, all that kind of stuff I was reading. And then I started studying the maxims of law. The maxims of law are equitable principles that are rooted in natural law. We're using equity right now, okay? And a lot of you don't even understand that. You come on my channel, start my 12 USC 411, and you know, or, or, you know just something like that, 
that and immediately when that falls out of your mouth, I understand that you still don't get it. You don't understand that equity doesn't have anything to do with statutes and privacy doesn't have anything to do with statutes. You're looking for a private remedy. Why do you think we're doing a status correction? Your status correction is to inform the government that you're not under that statutory scheme. But to not be under that statutory scheme, you got to be fucking, you got to be a follower of something has to guide you. Something has to govern you. Okay? So what is governing you? You're not finna just release yourself from the statutory authority and walk around and you're not governed by something. Why do you think they got Masons and Illuminati and Brotherhood of Light and Rosicrucian? Why do you think, what do you think they're doing in all these orders? Equity looks at on as done which ought to have been done. That's the first one. Remember that. Equity will not suffer a wrong without a remedy. Equity will not allow a wrongdoer to profit by a wrong. Equity does not punish. Equity is a sort of equality. One who seeks equity must do equity. Remember that one. One who seeks equity must do equity. Delay de defeats equity or equity aids the vigilant, not the indolent. That's why we took t time frames on everything. You got to put a time frame on everything when you do an administrative process. You gotta, that's why you have to answer everything within 72 hours. The rule of 72, after 72 hours a contract is formed. When you get something in the mail, you have to be honorable and send it back within 72 hours. Equity imputes an intention to fulfill an obligation. Equity acts in personam, namely on persons rather than on objects, not in, not in rem. In rem is on objects and things, in personam. Equity abhors a forfeiture. Equity does not require an idle gesture. He who comes into equity must come with clean hands. That is a term. Let's look at this term, clean hands, real quick. Let's look at this term, claim. this is important because when you do your bill in equity, you're going to see the terms clean hands and uh, let's look at clean hands real quick. Clean hands doctrine. Clean hands doctrine, the principle that a party cannot seek equitable relief or assert an equitable defense if that party has violated an equitable principle, such as good faith. Such a party is described as having unclean hands. For example, uh, Section 8 of the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction Act contains an unclean hands provision that forbids a court from exercising jurisdiction in a child custody suit in certain situations as when one party has wrongfully removed a child from another state, has improperly retained custody of a child after visitation, or has wrongfully removed a child from the person with custody. The clean hands doctrine evolved from the discretionary nature of equitable relief in English courts of equity such as chancery, the chancery courts which are religious and somebody say we get the Bible this is what I don't understand we talk about equitable principles and you don't want to talk about religion the Bible God or nothing like that you think come on can we get to creditors in their bonds so you have to have clean hands and good faith Clean hands, and I'm going to show you a bill in equity. I'm going to show you a bill in equity. Oh, matter of fact, what page is this? Page 10. Let me jump over here real quick. You see this right here, this is a bill in equity. You see this? You see down here? 
plaintiff has exhausted his administrative remedy and comes to this court of equity with clean hands and in good faith. Now, I hope everybody that's listening that you understand those two words because if you do not understand those two words, you're wasting your time doing any of this. You're wasting your time doing the administrative process. You're just wasting your fucking time. If you don't understand that these are equitable, these are equitable remedies and you are seeking equitable relief and you have to follow equitable principles and the two main ones are good, clean hands and good faith and that is the reason that you are doing an administrative process. So you have evidence that you've done everything with clean hands and in good faith. Is anybody on here not understand what I'm saying right now? Anybody understand what I'm not saying right now? They, you right, see, see, they don't. They think I'm just up here preaching. Because, listen, man, this is where the world is right now. They don't want to hear nothing like that. They think, they think that I'm really, I'm not fucking religious. I'm not religious. I'm trying to give you simple, because if I get too complex, I start talking about the mental, spiritual, and physical planes and how energy operates and things like that. You, y'all lose you. All right, so we might as well start talking about it in a simpler terms that everybody can understand. And the Bible does a very good job of that. It talks in simple language and in the layman can understand. And everybody should understand equitable principles. These are principles. These are immutable laws. Okay? For you to get equity, you must do equity. You get in a bill in equity. Ain't no statutory codes anywhere we're looking for. These are private processes. There are private people dealing contracts. This is why we're doing an administrative process. Everything in creditor and their bonds is teaching you about an administrative process. The equity courts from, come from the courts of chancery, which comes from the goddamn church. That's why I'm sitting here talking about this shit that you want to run me to run through. Let's get back. That's all they, they and, and that's what the world is doing. They're destroying religion. They're destroying it. They're destroying it. And people just rolling with them. Anyway, let's get back. Criminal charges are often brought for acts done with no criminal intent. Criminal intent is mens rea. Write this word down. Mens rea. Let's look at this word. Mens rea. Men's rea. Or men's ray. I right, men's ray. Men's ray. Latin. Guilty mind. Okay, so there is an equi- there's a principle that says for you to be guilty, the mind must be guilty. That's when they, when they put you on the witness stand, they do an examination and a cross-examination. What do you think they are examining? Everybody in the chat room, tell me right now. What do you think when they put you on the witness stand, they are making an examination of? What is what are they trying to determine about you? If you're doing an examination and a cross examination, what is it that's being examined? Anybody in the chat room can answer. What is being examined? They're examining your competence. Does that, thank you. Thank you, Rich Cambino. Thank you, Rich Cambino. They're they examining your mind. And the mind has a conscious and subconscious mind. The conscious mind, okay, and the subconscious mind. And they have to be in agreement with one another. And if you're not, then you are committing perjury because the subconscious mind can't lie. The subconscious mind can't lie because the conscious mind is the seat of the will where you have where you can make decisions. You can decide to lie or not with your conscious mind. You can't lie to yourself. It's impossible. All right, so mens rea or mens re is guilty mind. The state of mind, the state of mind that the 
prosecution to secure a conviction must prove that a defendant had when committing a crime, criminal intent or recklessness. The mens rea for theft is the intent to deprive the rightful owner of the property. Mens rea is the second of two essential elements of every crime at common law, the other being actus reus, also termed mental element, criminal intent, guilty mind. Okay, so right here, we gotta understand I, what is your intent? They have to, you have to make your intentions known. So when you give notices, this is why UCC 1-202 is so important. I, when you give notices, can anyone accuse you of criminal intent if you made your intentions known before you did any action? Somebody answer that. Anybody answer that right now in the chat room. If you give someone notice and time to respond, this is what my intentions are. And this is the action I'm going to take. If you don't feel like it is within the bounds of the law or in some kind of way you have some sort of issue or you take issue with the action I'm about to take, I'm giving you an opportunity to respond to this. Can anyone accuse you of criminal intent if you've given someone notice and your actions are within the bounds of law? Okay, so show your good faith. So this is why we write letters. This is why in the secure party, party process is 60 days before you even discharge a debt. It's 60, I hope y'all listening, you government officials are listening right now. It's 60 days, we write y'all a series of letters, let you know what we're about to do, and it is your duty up in that office that if you have a problem with what we're about to, you don't never write us back because we ain't doing nothing wrong, and you know that. That's why you don't write it back, but you come out here on these, uh, on these channels, on Instagram and shit like that, and on YouTube, making uh, these Sovereign Citizen Fail videos and shit like that, trying to clown the very people that you are supposed to be serving. Criminal charge is often brought for acts done with no criminal intent. Ignorance of the law is no excuse for doing something that is against the law, but harsh punishment for doing an act does not adhere to due process of law. If you had no intent to commit, which is considered to be a crime. Let me tell you why I do this. Do you not know they are giving people 20, 30, 40, 50 years for selling dope? I don't think nobody deserves that. You didn't kill nobody. It's called a victim. You know, you know, victimless crime. Let's look at this real quick. Let's look at this real quick. Let's look at this. It's called victimless crime. Let's look at this. Let's look at this real quick. Okay, it's under crime. Okay, here's commercial crime, a crime that affects commerce, especially a crime directed toward the property of revenues of a commercial establishment. Right there, but we're looking for victimless crime. So let's go down here. Victimless crime, a crime that is considered to have no direct victim, usually because only consenting adults are involved in drug transactions as two consenting adults. Examples are possession of illicit drugs and deviant sexual intercourse between consenting adults. Also termed consensual crime, crime with no victims, complaintless crime. When a man's house has been robbed or his brother murdered, he's likely to take his complaint vigorously to the police and demand action. His presence on the scene dramatizes the need for law enforcement and gives sense and purpose to the work of the police and district attorney. 
In contrast, the absence of a prosecuting witness surrounds crimes without victims with an entirely different atmosphere. Here it is the police who must assume the initiative. If they attempt to work without the aid of informers, they must resort to spying, and this spying is rendered all the more distasteful because it is spied upon, is sordid, and pitiable. I, I don't know why he put that in there, but I wanted you to see that illicit drugs and everything. Drugs are considered victimless crimes. There's no victim. So my question to anybody out there, do you think somebody deserves to go to prison for 30 and 40 years when they only have one life on this planet? You're going to put somebody, they first time committing a crime, you're going to put them in jail for 30 years because they sold some drugs that maybe they didn't know what they were doing, maybe they didn't have the right upbringing or something like that. Maybe they did know that there was a possibility that they were going to get arrested or something like that. But you think they deserve 30 years in prison? You think somebody deserves 30 years in prison of their life, 30 years in prison? Let me tell you something, five years, if a person goes to jail for five years and they can't change their ways, if you hit them again, you can hit them with the book. I don't even care. Because if you go to prison for five years and you can't see that, hey, this is not what I want to do and not the place I want to be, then you can do whatever they want. But if they ain't taking a life, you ain't raped nobody, you haven't killed nobody, you haven't done anything like that, well, how in the hell do you justify putting somebody in prison? prison for 30 years. That's evil. That's called draconian. Write that word down. It's called draconian. From the draco, which is reptilian-like, which is heartless. Let's get back to creditors and their bonds. All right. Let me read it again. Criminal charges are often brought for acts done with no criminal intent. Ignorance of the law is no excuse for doing something that is against the law, but harsh punishment for doing an act does not adhere to due process of law. If you had no intent to commit what is considered to be a crime, civil actions are initiated to get money or other property. This is where your exemption is useful, but they, act like, but they, they like to act like there is no value in your exemption. It is good to include a statement like, I'm making every effort to follow the law. There is so much law and so many different jurisdictions in which there are different laws that your intent to follow God's law carries over into political law also. Now one here, right here, see how it's talking about God's law again, but somebody trying to rush me through because I'm talking about God's law, and but you thinking you're looking for some sort of remedy in all of this, and I can't talk about God's law, but you want me to talk about this bullshit right here, these, this, this, this physical ass damn administrative process. This is where the bulk of your interest is in, and then you wonder why the world is in the state that it's in, because you you have prioritized the wrong damn thing. We talk, I talk every day about the law of attraction. I have money. I give money every. I give every homeless person. I give out twenties. I give out every, everything. I'm always constantly giving, and money constantly flows to me, just constantly in a never-ending stream of abundance, because I'm constantly giving, because I understand God's law. And I can't even sit on this thing. You want to rush me. You can't even give a $5 donation. Set a time limit. Since you're using commercial guidelines as a basis for your process, the presenter should do that also. Be sure to give him a date on which you expect a reply from him. Some situations only allow for a three-day response time. Others should allow 14 days or 30 days or even 60 days. It depends on the situation. If you're using three days as a response time, you also have to allow for mailing time. Usually three days each way plus a Sunday is sufficient for replies to demands for which the presenter should have what you are requesting in his possession. If there is processing involved on the presenter's end, a longer time is warranted. That's where the 10 days come. See, it's a, really, it's like basis 10 days, but it's not just 10 days. You know, if you use the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, it's 20 days. 21 days, you got to give them time to respond. So there's some things that are governed by statute, and you have to hear by the time frames that are within that statute. Other matters, if they're strictly private, the 10-day time frame should suffice. Where does the 10 days come from? Three days travel time. There's the thing called Rule of 72. I want you to, I want y'all to, I'm going to get into some esoteric discussion right now. There's something called the 72 zones that girdle the earth.
Let me see if it's one if if it's one here if it's on here. Oops, I put seventy two B. Oh, let me put his name. Still in problem. Get this book right here. Get this book, The Practice of Magical Evocation. I'm trying to pull it up, but I'll just tell you about it. There are 72 zones that girdle the earth, and there is an angel and a demon that governs each zone. Okay, you're going to see this number 72 pop up a lot. There's some the, the numbers are mystical. Okay, so there's 72 hours. There's a reason why the number three three is a magic number. Okay, three days is 72 hours. Okay, every they do everything in threes. The 72 hours is a purpose for it. I'm, I'm not going to get deep into it, but I just want to make you aware of that, that everything that they do, there's an esoteric, something esoteric in the background about it because everybody who works in there is in a, a Masonic Lodge, a Rosicrucian, something like that. Thank you, Jeremy. So we want a time limit on any of your correspondence. You, anytime you write anybody in the public, you always give them a time limit. You always, always, always. I'm going to expect a reply within 72 hours. I'm going to expect a reply in 10 days. They do the same thing to you. You're going to file a UCC-1. Okay, here is where you got to start paying attention because this gets into filing liens against people. This gets into you discharging debt. All of this gets into what we're doing right now is actually going step by step into discharging debt. Discharging debt is about documentation. Have you documented properly every step of the way and provided evidence to support your position as well as witnesses to substantiate that you have approached this with clean hands and in good faith? Does everybody understand what I just said? Is anybody confused on anything that I'm talking about right now? All right, so you're going to file a, a UCC-1 as a notice. It don't do nothing magical. All it does is provide a notice, the commercial chain. That's why I said also that when, uh, that when they try to say, oh, you know, you can't file a UCC-1 against yourself, don't argue with them. Just change the debtor into a trust or something like that. I'm not overly concerned with the name. You want the filing number. The reason you want the filing number is because you want a commercial registry that you can file notices in for pu and then direct them to where the public notice is at. That's all you're doing. Let's see, you can't file a UCC-1 against yourself as if they don't understand that the creditor is a real living person and that the debtor is an artificial person, an ends legis, a straw man, a nom de gore. So, when to file this form, when not to file this form, what goes on the form. See examples five. We got examples. I'm going to show you. Name of the debtor is always in all capitals. Individual and organization. Which really interesting. I'm going to stop. We're going to look at this word individual. This is a very, very important word for you to understand. What is an individual? All right. Let's look at this real quick. What is an individual? Individual. Black's Law Dictionary. Mm -hmm. 
Đấy. What is an individual existing as an indivisible entity of or relating to a single person or thing as opposed to a group? We already know what a person is or a thing. Do you know what a thing is? We're going to look at thing and we're going to look at person. Okay, this is the second sense of the word. What is a person and what is a thing? But right in the first one, what is it says existing as an indivisible entity? Well, what is an entity? Let's look up an entity. What is an entity? Oh, there go ends legis right there. Y'all want an ends legis. A creature of the law, an artificial being as opposed to a natural person. All right, when I said ends legis, this is what I was referencing. All right, for all the new people. That's what the ends legis, I said the artificial, the man is an ends legis. All right, so we're looking at where the entity. Well, what is an entity? Because they won't tell you what an entity is. All right, so here it is right here. Entity. An organization such as a business or a governmental unit that has a legal identity apart from its members. So if an individual is an, is an entity or a person or a thing, let's look at thing real quick. What is a thing? What is a thing? Can anybody else on the internet do what I'm doing right now with this dictionary? Y'all can't go nowhere else and see somebody fly through the dictionary like this. Where else you gonna go and they gonna fly through the dictionary online in real time, live stream, and go through the dictionary like this? Y'all get these, are you writing these damn thing? Right here. It says thing, the subject matter of a right, whether it is a material object or not, any subject matter of ownership within the sphere of proprietary or valuable rights. Things are divided into three categories. Number one, things real or immovable, such as land, tenements, and hereditaments. Number two, things personal or movable, such as goods and chattels. And number three, things that have both real and personal characteristics, such as a title deed and a tenancy for a term. The civil law divided things into corporal, tangy, pursuit, and incorporal, tangi, non pursuit. Okay, so there you go for the definition of a thing. I'm just putting all these on your mind. I'm just putting them on your mind. I right, got just giving you good study habits. All right. So right now we're going back and let's go and look at this again. So it's an individual or organization. Well, it's, it's kind of confusing because an individual is an organization. This right here, the reason I showed you this is that when you file a UCC one, everything on that UCC one form is considered to be some sort of artificial person. Because everything in the public is an artificial person. They, they are trying to hide this fact, but everything is an artificial person. Everything. Okay? So, all this is what we're looking at that's going to go on the UCC1. We're going to get an example of all of this. How to file this form, cover letter to go with the form. All right, now, after we do all of this, after we, do our, after we send our first correspondence, when we make our requests... If you were watching the last video, we're going to make a second request. This is called an opportunity to, it's called a notice of default and opportunity to cure. Notice of default and opportunity to cure. Some people give it other names. It really doesn't matter what you call it. Okay. But what it is, is you want to give them two opportunities to do the right thing because mistake is a principle of the UCC. So you got to allow room for them to make a mistake. So when you send them the first notice and they don't get back with you, okay, well, it must have been some sort of mistake. Don't start don't lodging or hurling accusations at them. Oh, you're corrupt. Thank you, Pam L. I appreciate you. Jeremy, appreciate you. So, we're going to send a notice. Thank you, Brian McGross. Open mind. Send a second notice. You can use Jack's letter or mail a cover letter with copies of the notice and other papers previously mailed to the presenter. Now, what I usually do when I send my second correspondence, I send them copies of everything I sent in the first correspondence. 
I sent as attachment A. Uh, for your convenience, I've attached copies of my original correspondence in case you've misplaced it, you've lost it or something, along with the certified mail number that was attached to it because somebody had to sign for this document that I sent to you. And you've gone well beyond the 10 days that are required for response. So I'm going to assume that there's some sort of mistake. We're going to go through each one of these. All right, we're going to look at that. All right, we're going to get into the documents in a little bit, into the documents. So we're sending a second notice. You can use Jack's letter or mail a cover letter with copies of the notice and other papers previously mailed to the presenter. The purpose of a second notice is to give the presenter a second opportunity to correct the mistake he made in making the presentment or in not settling the account. You will be accepting the presumption that he made a mistake and it was not intentional. You will be accepting the presumption that he was unable for some reason to respond to your first notice. A second notice is the same as the old notice of fault or notice of default. The step is part of the law merchant and the grace that is given to debtors to help them settle their accounts without going to war. Going to court is like going to war. If you have to go to court, finish the war before asking the court for a final remedy. It does not necessarily need a title. Okay. Okay, well, what is that? Matthew 5.25. I'm going back to the Bible again. I don't give a damn if you don't like it. You in church today. Matthew 5.25. What does Matthew 5.25 say? Oops. Agree with your adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. At least at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Okay, so we need an agreement before you go to court. That is the purpose of doing an administrative process, is to secure an agreement. Okay, an agreement of the parties, or a stipulation of the parties. A stipulation. Let's look at the word stipulation. Let's look at this word stipulation. What is a stipulation? What is a stipulation? Gabrielle, I appreciate that. What is a stipulation? Stipulation. You will hear attorney say this. Uh, we reached a stipulation with the prosecutor, and he's offering you five years uh, prison time and five years probation. I think this is a very good offer, and I think you should take it. Stipulation, a material condition, a requirement, and an agreement, especially a factual representation that is incorporated into a contract as a term. Such a contractual term often appears in a section of the contract called representations and warranties. Well, why do they say do we have stipu uh, uh, the part of the stip uh, stipulation to the facts? Look at that Roman law, formal contract. We need to study this word stipulation. But it's essentially an agreement of the parties. You want to have an agreement before you go to court because you're not. See, one thing that we don't do is we don't argue. Arguing is the domain of attorneys. That's what they're good at. Like attorneys are good at arguing. They go to college. That's what they go to college for. Learn how to argue. Learn how to argue. You ain't been in school to do that shit. You trying to go in there and argue with these people? And he went to three years and then got time out on the street to learn how to argue. You're not here to argue anything. You want to stay away from arguments. Arguments are dangerous. All right? And when you argue, that is called a traverse. You have just breathed life into something that it was of no account at first. It's like this. Like an attorney told me, with Mike Tyson and you know everything. Big John, thank you, and Joe DeLuca, thank you. I appreciate it. If somebody comes and make an accusation against you, and there aren't any witnesses, it's just your word against his. Okay, and the police come and question you about it, you have the right to remain silent. Don't say shit. They don't have any witnesses. They don't have shit. Just be quiet. Shut the fuck up. You don't have to explain shit. The burden of proof is on he who asserts, not he who denies. It's on them to prove the case, not you. You sitting there giving them what they need? You testifying against yourself? Anything you say can and will be used against you? A 
man, look, man, I ain't do nothing, man. Why y'all tripping and shit, man? Look, man, I was just walking down the street, and me and my boy, you know, hey, you know, we just going over my girl house and everything, and, you know, y'all wrote, man, I ain't do nothing, man. Why y'all tripping? Why y'all messing with me and shit? You trying to talk your way out of some shit. There is a video on the internet. It's called Do Not Talk to the Police. You would be... Uh, it would be remiss of you as a parent not to show that to your children, and especially every person on this call who has a young, a, a, a child or a teenager under the age of 18, they should make them watch both of those videos and make them write a motherfucking report on it. And I'm going to give you the videos right here. You should make them do a report. You say, look, man, you ain't put that fucking PlayStation down. All right, put it down. It's given by an attorney. This guy right here, don't talk to the police. God for the Fifth Amendment. All right, right here, you see this? 18 million views. I remember when he first came out with it. It wasn't even 18 million, it wasn't even a million. 18 million views now. And it's given by him, and the second one is given by his friend. There's two of them, there's a part one and part two. One, the first part is, he's an attorney. The other guy is an investigator. Okay, if you as a man living in the United States of America, you, you, you're supposed to watch that video. It will save your life. I, let me tell you, when, when that attorney gave me that advice on keeping my mouth shut, I can't tell you how many times that has saved me. That has saved me. Somebody called me, Mr. Jones, we come down and, uh, you know, we'd like to come down and ask you a couple of questions. Uh, could you come down to the station? I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Fuck no. If you got anything, get a fucking warrant and come and fucking give me. Otherwise, fuck you and hang up the phone. All right, so we try not to go to war. We're trying to reach a stipulation or an agreement of the parties, and that is, a, that is why you're doing an administrative process. That is why you're doing an administrative process. I want everybody to say it with me. The reason I'm doing an administrative process is to secure a stipulation of the parties, an agreement of the parties. That is what you're doing. That is what you're doing. That is what you're doing. You want an agreement. All right? You have an argument. If you had an argument with your girl, if your girl took your child, Let's, let's, let's just use some two people doing it. Let's not even involve the police. And your girl, and there's a court order. Uh, now, I'm going to give you a real life example that happened to me. This is what happened to me. This happened to me. I was messing with this girl. And she was crazy about me. She was crazy. And just a little too crazy. And so, you know, she come over my house. I'm working because, you know, this is the time I'm really just establishing everything. I'm working like feverishly every day, you know. And she said, we need to talk. I said, look, babe, I can't talk right now. I'm busy. I said, but, you know, um, I'll talk to you later. But, hey, why don't you do this? Here, here's the keys to my car. Here's some money. Go to the store and get you something to eat while I'm doing this. Now, she, this, this motherfucker's crazy because she's so mad I didn't talk to her right then. She was from Florida. She took my car and drove the motherfucker to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't bring the but didn't bring the motherfucker back. All right, so I called the police. I said, "Say, man, this girl stole my car." He said, "Did you give her the key?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "No, nah, she didn't steal the car." You have to write her a letter and demand that she return the car, and then after seventy-two hours, you, then you can come down here and report the car stolen. But you have to demand how I return the car. Now, I ain't got this motherfucker's address or nothing like that. I had to take my ass and rent a car and drive down to Florida and get my damn car back from this crazy ass girl. <laughs> from this crazy ass girl. But she did all that just to get my attention. But I'm just putting it out there just to give you, just, just to let you see, to make you understand that what is the importance of notices in writing something and giving somebody notice. You have to do something equitably. I gave her the keys to the car. It is not right for me to say that she stole the car and I gave her the keys. Now, I didn't say tell her to drive it down to Florida, <laughs> but y'all understand what I'm saying. 72 hours again, that's exactly correct. 
All right. So this next one is very, this is where it gets very interesting. We're going to file a release of interest. Now, the reason that you're filing a UCC-1 is that you are in the public, you're, in, you're, you're filing notices in the public to tell everybody the dispute that's going on between whoever it is that you're going against. That's why you need a commercial registry, because that's where you file notices. So you're giving public notice right, that there is a private matter that is being resolved. You don't give them the details of the private matter. You just let them know in the public that there is a private matter that's being resolved, usually between you and a prosecutor or some credit or something like that because this is a private process. This is the reason also why your dumb ass don't go and start filing along with your UCC1's copies of other documents. Why the fuck are you doing that? That is why they have a collateral description box. You can give a description of the collateral or whatever it is that you are doing in the collateral description and then you provide your contact information and if they need some additional information anyone who looks at that they can contact you. But you don't file copies of your security agreement, your bonds, pictures of goddamn silver, and all of that. You don't do that bullshit. I'm not going to do nothing, Big John. I'm going to follow this step by step. You can sit your ass down and wait for me to get to that part. I'm not rushing on anything. All right? I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm going to tell you what's in this. It's called creditors and their bonds. I'm going page by page. If you don't like where I'm at, come back tomorrow. All right, so we're filing a UCC-3. A UCC-3 is an addendum, and then we're filing a release. We only file this once they have gone into default, once they have defaulted on what they're supposed to do. We're going to have examples of all of these forms, all right? These commercial forms are only notices. You see right here? These are notices. These commercial forms are only notices. The man is not involved in the process. It is all done by the straw man, the debtor, because everything in the public is what? Artificial persons. You're in the private. We're also going to send a notice of termination. Okay, we got to give them a notice that you're, terminate, that you're terminating any interest that they have. If it's a house, you send them a notice of termination. You're letting them know. I noticed you all the way through this. I provided you with a negotiable instrument. I gave you two opportunities to respond. You didn't respond. You Obviously, you did not provide me with any evidence of a defect in the instrument or you had a problem with anything. So I'm putting a public notice that there's a termination and a release of interest of your interest in my collateral. You're going to get an example of that. This is called self-help remedies. Self-help remedies. All right, so let's keep going. You're going to send a confirmation. Okay, it says, let's look at the termination letter. If you have terminated the claimant's interest in the collateral, notice must be given to the claimant so he has an opportunity to object. He cannot just object. A naked objection is a dishonor, and no one can win while in dishonor unless the other party is also in dishonor. We must produce his authority to object and a reason why he's objecting. His objection cannot be based on his disapproval of your actions. He may try to trick you into joining him in dishonor. Don't fall for that. This this is another key. You always have to remain in honor. You have to be step. Remember what it says about we use the word honor. Another word would be clean hands. It's equitable. You always have to maintain clean hands. They will try to get you to get into unclean hands, cussing out the attorney, cussing out the police officer, cussing out the judge, not answering in a, in, in a proper time, failing to appear. All of those are dishonorable. And you'll be, as you got plants in the patriot community, y'all dumb as hell if y'all don't think that they didn't put plants in the patriot community, got y'all, oh, you don't need to go to court. You don't need to do that, dude. I get calls every day, man, I got a warrant out for my arrest. What I do, Yusuf? What I do? What you do is you remain in honor at all cost. We're also going to send a confirmation letter. The purpose of the confirmation letter is to document the agreement of the parties. When you have the claimant notice that you have terminated its interest in the collateral, you also give him an opportunity to object to the process you used. That is like an appeal. 
An appeal is only used when there is procedural defect in the process that led to a party uh, that led to a party to a court case losing the case. Notice I said procedural. Everything they do in the public is, is, is procedure and process. When you appeal something, there's some defect in the procedure. Procedures are put in place to ensure that there are no constitutional violations. This is why y'all look like damn fools. So what the police don't know the Constitution? Because they don't have to know the Constitution. What they have to follow is procedures. They do what they're told to do. They don't have to know what the Constitution is. They need to know what the procedures is. The procedures have been verified and put in place to ensure there are no constitutional violations. You look like a damn fool coming on videos to these police officers are stupid because they don't know the Constitution. They don't have to know the Constitution. They, need, they know the procedure. Stay in honor at all times. Do not argue, deny, defend, accuse, protest, or testify. What you do is adapt. Do not argue, do not deny, do not defend, accuse, protest, or testify. That is it for tonight's class. I will be back tomorrow. I will not do any preaching tomorrow, I promise you. I was in a bad mood today, man. I just didn't like what I was seeing out there. But tomorrow we're going to do part five of this class. Y'all enjoy the class? I appreciate all the donations. Appreciate the donations. And y'all go back and watch this, all right? I want to thank everybody for coming out tomorrow. Y'all like the videos? I'm posting stuff every day. Consultations are with, you know what? I'm, I'm about to, don't, don't, I'm going to put a link for the consultations. This is when I'm going to start doing consultations, y'all. I'm going to use currency circulator for consultations. I want y'all to get y'all money back that y'all give me for consultations. I'm going to put y'all in credit. All the people who do consultations with me, I'm going to let you pay for your consultation through Currency Circulator. That way, you'll get put into a, a cycle where you'll get money back. We're going to get money back. So I'm going to put a link for that. And then you could also, it'll be easier for you to contact me also because there's an inner uh, inside currency circulator. You can send emails. You can contact. It's much easier to contact, uh, contact me within that. So at the bottom of this, I am going to put a, uh, a, uh, a link Okay, the currency circulator, you can join currency circulator and because I'm going to be establishing a trust and, and, and it's going to be an investment trust and I want people to make money. I'm, I'm just trying to look for y'all the ways to make money, okay? But anyway, I want to thank everybody. Thank you for, oh shoot, somebody just came in. Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming in. I want to appreciate you. I will see you tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Peace to the gods. Good night.